Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. It is Monday, March 15th, and I have your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you so much for choosing to be here to get filled in on the stories that you are clicking on. First up, great news for people who may have gotten unemployment benefits last year. There's a new tax break in the American Rescue Plan, that $1.9 trillion package that was signed into law last week by President Joe Biden. If you got unemployment benefits in 2020, the first $10,200 of those benefits will not be taxable. Now, typically, unemployment benefits are taxed. So this is a change to the process there. 3 News talked with Don DeSantis, who is with Clifton Larson Allen, and he said that he thought that the problem that Congress and President Biden were concerned about were that millions of people got unemployment last year for the first time, weren't necessarily aware that it's taxable, and may have been hit with an unpleasant surprise having to pay the taxes on those unemployment benefits when they file their taxes this year for the 2020 tax season. So this tax break has been put into play. Now, this is for people who make up to $150,000 in the household in 2020. And if you did choose to withhold taxes from your unemployment, that is an option. If you got those unemployment benefits, DeSanta says you'll get that money back. So keep that in mind when you're doing your filing for taxes this year. Now, Governor Mike DeWine has said that there will be about 210,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines headed to the Wolstein Center. That is the mass vaccination shot, excuse me, the mass vaccination site here in Northeast Ohio that will be opening up on Wednesday on St. Patrick's Day. Now, the site has the capacity to do 6,000 shots a day. That's not necessarily 6,000 full vaccinations a day because we are still working with two shot vaccines as well as the one shot vaccine from Johnson and Johnson, but capacity to serve 6,000 people per day. But the site is not going to open at full capacity. Governor DeWine said that when it opens on Tuesday, March 17th, it'll be sort of a soft launch and they will see about 1,500 people. And then it'll slowly ramp up. And then by next week, by next Monday, March 22nd, they do hope to be up to the full 6,000 people per day. Now, the goal of this site is to provide community outreach and reach those underserved populations, those people who don't have easy access to the COVID-19 vaccine. Cuyahoga County Executive Armand Budish says that they want to get to the community where people are not getting it and should be getting it. So we do also now know what vaccines will be used at the Wolstein Center because there were some questions about that for the first three weeks they will run the Pfizer vaccine. That is a two-shot dose. So for the first three weeks, people will get the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. And then weeks four, five, and six, people will get the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. And then during week seven and week eight, they will transition to the one-shot vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And as a result, 210,000 Ohioans will receive the vaccine over the course of eight weeks. That's what will be happening there when that soft launch happens on Wednesday. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers, the global and the national numbers coming from Johns Hopkins University. Globally, there have now been a total of 120,049,867 reported COVID-19 cases. The total number of deaths is now at 2,657,106. Here in the U.S., we have 4% of the global population, and we lead the percentage of cases and the percentage of deaths. We have two point, uh, excuse me, 24.5% of the global cases and 20.1% of the global deaths. And across the U.S., the total number of cases is now at 29,459,032. The total number of reported deaths now at 535,176. Here in Ohio, we have the latest data from the Ohio Department of Health. The total number of cases in Ohio that we've seen the new cases in the last 24 hours, 1,149 new cases in the last day here in Ohio. We don't have any updated information about the total number of deaths. Remember, Ohio did change the way it's reporting COVID-19 deaths, now just going by official death certificates. So when we have an updated number there, I will share that with you. 
On Saturday, there were about 23,000 COVID-19 tests done and 3.2% of them came back positive. So about 727 positives on Saturday. And the seven day average for positive COVID-19 tests is about 3% right now. In the last day, we've seen 91 people hospitalized with COVID-19, and there are 914 people currently in the hospital being treated for COVID. Out of those people, 228 of them are being treated in the ICU, and we've seen nine new ICU admissions in the last 24 hours. Let's take a look at the number of people vaccinated across the state of Ohio right now. The total number of people in Ohio who have completed vaccinations is at almost 12 percent. That's about 1.4 million Ohioans. And in the last day, 20,000 more people have completed their vaccinations here in Ohio. And in terms of the number of people who have started the vaccination process, we are now about 20.5 percent of Ohio's population who have started it that are getting the two dose versions of the COVID-19 vaccine. That's almost 2.4 million people and 26,000 more people in the last 24 hours. Now, let's talk a little bit about sports. The Tribe did announce that they will be changing the name of the baseball team, as we know, coming up soon. Now they will continue to have their current name through 2021, but after that, they'll be making a change, and there's a lot of people talking about what they like that would what they would like that to be. Well, Saucy Brew Works is now getting into the conversation. They've announced a new beer and they're campaigning for municipals to become the new Cleveland baseball team name. So they're releasing a beer called Municipals on April 5th, and that will coincide with the Tribe's 2021 home opener at Progressive Field against the Kansas City Royals. Here's what Saucy Brew Works said. They said, they think this is the appropriate name to honor the legacy of the historic franchise while authentically representing the city of Cleveland and its people. To celebrate this new era of Cleveland baseball, Saucy Brew Works will be brewing a second baseball-themed beer. Their other seasonal baseball-themed beer is called Stealing Signs. Now, this one will be called Municipals, and it is a Munich-style lager to be released, as I said, to coincide with the home opener on April 5th. Taking a look at football news, the Cleveland Browns are entering the 2021 offseason with more than $24 million in cap space, which puts them at a nice spot when it comes to money they have to play with in order to build out the roster. A lot of people talking about the needs on the defensive line, but we don't know exactly what they'll do. So what we're doing is we're tracking what they're doing in free agency. We have a running list of all the latest Browns related rumors, news and signings as Cleveland looks to build upon its roster to improve on last season's 11-5 and regular season record. Here's two updates that we have as of today. According to Josina Anderson, the Browns are among the teams who have shown interest in New Orleans Saints defensive end Trey Hendrickson. Other teams potentially looking at Hendrickson are the New York Jets and the Minnesota Vikings. Now remember, the Browns have been taking a look at defensive end positions. Somebody to line up alongside Miles Garrett and see what we can do in order to tighten up that defense. Another thing we're learning today, the Browns have issued a restricted free agent tender to wide receiver Kaderil Hodge. So this means that Cleveland will have the opportunity to match any offer that Hodge receives for the upcoming season in free agency. We'll be keeping a close eye on that, so you can catch all of that on WKYC.com. That's courtesy of our 3 News Sports analyst, Ben Axelrod, who was always very on top of those things. Now, this week, more Browns talk. My guest on the Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney podcast this week is Callie Brownson. She is the Cleveland Browns Chief of Staff. We talk all things about her career. She tells me the moment when she thought that she was just going to be a fan of football for the rest of her life, what that was like, and when she first realized that there were gender barriers in place for her because she grew up as a little girl playing football, playing baseball, right alongside the guys in her community, and there was a moment when she thought that that was it for her and she would just be a fan, so we talk about that. We also talk about what it meant for her to see herself 
at the Pro Football Hall of Fame and how what that meant for her was much bigger than herself. She also shares her weekly mantras and how she comes up with that. It's a great conversation. You can read an in-depth breakdown of our conversation on WKYC.com right now, and you can listen to our conversation on the podcast, which is Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, and you can find that wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure you check that out. It was a great conversation. Callie Brownson is a very interesting individual, also named one of Cleveland Magazine's 2021 Most Interesting People for Cleveland this year, with good reason. And here is something that people will get very excited about every March 15th. Like clockwork since 1957, the buzzards are back. I'm talking about the buzzards that return every year to the Hinkley Reservation in the Cleveland Metro Park system, and the official buzzard spotter has confirmed as of 9 a.m. today, the buzzards are back at the legendary buzzard roost, and that is a sure sign of spring every single year. Now, if you can't make it, to see the return of the buzzards today, here's something that you can do. Naturalist Foster Brown will be at the buzzard roost on Sunday, March 21st. He'll uh, That'll be from 10 a.m. to noon and pointing out turkey vultures and explaining things about turkey vultures. Now, it's not an official event, but you are welcome to stop by with questions. And, of course, 3 News was on the scene when the buzzards arrived back this morning, confirming that, yes, they are there and spring is on the way. All right, that's it for your three news now update today for Monday, March 15th. I will see you all next on What's New with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for more three news now. Everyone, stay safe, be well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I'll see you back here tomorrow. I'm Stephanie Haney.